Good morning and welcome to the service this morning. We're going to start by singing uh, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to everyone here in church or joining us online um, for the fourth Sunday of Easter. And you'll see the sermon series that we're going through, Therefore Go. And today, Pastor might give us a little bit of an English lesson, I think. You might learn a new, a new word, a new vocab. Um, but as, as, he, as he gives our message today, Therefore Go as aptronyms, he says. So we'll see what that means. Please stand, and may God bless our worship as we begin with our opening song.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways, I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Now we join with our, our morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. Keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings and life may please you. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. You may be seated. Now I invite all the children of the congregation to come forward for the children's message with Pastor. And parents, if you want to come with your kids, feel free. Morning, children. Good morning, Pastor. Wow, it's great to see all of you today, right? You know, one of the hardest things that parents do, and you might not think of it, is some, sometimes it's easy, but sometimes it's hard, is when a mom and a dad are going to have a baby, and they have to decide on a name for a baby. Now, sometimes they just know, but sometimes it's a hard thing. What am I going to name the baby? What are, you know, so your parents, and you can ask your mom and dad this story, they had to decide what to name you, to give you a name. And so sometimes when you get a name, you think, hmm, how do you decide on a name? Sometimes you name a person, you name a child, a boy or girl, after someone. So for example, me, I was named after someone. My first name, you call me pastor, but my first name is Mark, and my second name is Warren. So Mark, I was named after a book in the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And the name Warren, where did that come from? That's my dad's first name. So sometimes we're named after a person. Sometimes you are given a name because your name has a special meaning. Does anybody know the meaning of their name? What's the meaning of your name? Strong. Strong. What's the meaning of your name? Bringer of good news. Star. Darren. Gift. Gift. Faithful. Faithful. That's wonderful. Sometimes maybe you were named after someone. The name has meaning. Or sometimes your mom or dad might just say, we just like that name. We just like the name. Right? So we all have different names here today. But I'm going to ask you this. We all, I'm going to ask you, a, I'm gonna, it's kind of a riddle. We all have the same name. Did you know that? We all have the same name. You said yes. What's the name? Close. He said Jesus. What's the name? Christian. We all have the name Christian. And do you know what happened? Some of you were baptized here in this church, or maybe in another church you were baptized. And when you were baptized, it's kind of a naming ceremony also, because what name was put on you? 
the name Christian. Scarlett, you were just baptized on Easter, right? And you got the name Christian. We all have the name Christian. That's a beautiful thing. So when you have that, now does it ever happen that somebody looks at you and says, oh yes, you look just like your mom or you look like your dad. Raise your hand if that's happened. Oh yeah, I can see a resemblance. Okay, I'm going to ask you this question. Do any of us look like Jesus? Well, that, that's kind of a trick question. is because we don't know what Jesus looked like exactly. But in some ways, can we say we look like Jesus? As Christians, we are to act like Jesus and to be like Jesus. I want you to listen closely in the sermon today because the sermon is not only for the big people, it's for you also. And to listen to why the name Christian came about and what do Christians look like. And that we pray every day, Lord, help me to thank you for being a Christian. Help me to look like a Christian every day too. Amen? Okay, let's pray. We'll fold our hands, bow our heads, close our eyes, because that helps us to concentrate. And repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for my name. Thank you for my other name. The name Christian. Help me always to know you and to live for you. Amen. Amen. Okay, let us stand. We'll turn around, and smaller ones, shorter ones can stand in the front, and Miss Ann will come, and we'll sing a song together. This is one of our favorite Sunday school songs, so when the children are singing the echo, please join in.
Good morning. Our first readings, uh, our first lesson from the day is Acts chapter 11, uh, chapter 11, verses 19 to 26, which will also serve as our sermon text this morning. Our readings for today focus on names, who God is and who we are. The reading tells us the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. We read, now those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed, traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also telling them the good news about Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw that what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church, and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Here ends our first lesson. Our second lesson is taken from 1 John chapter 3, verses only 1 through 2. How wonderful to know the Father's love, which makes us the children of God. We read, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not been made known yet. But we know when Christ appears, We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Here ends our second lesson. Please join and sing the response, Lord, I lift your name on high. Our final lesson this morning is taken from the Gospel book, John chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. Congregation, please write for the Gospel. Jesus reveals himself to the good shepherd of his sheep. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd 
and does not own the sheep. So when he sees wolves coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks, and the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. This is the word of our God. Congregation, please remain standing and sing the sermon song, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Shepherd. 
May the one who has promised his Holy Spirit, when people gather to hear his word, may that promise be in our hearts, fulfilled in our hearts today. Amen. You may be seated. Dear friends in Christ, whether it was a good experience for you or not, let us go back to language class in high school. You ready? Remember we had, you, you had to learn about figures of speech? Remember that? And you had to learn about homonyms and synonyms, synony, not synonyms, synonyms. <laughs> See how well I listen. What's a homonym? Sounds the, same. Sounds the same, but different meaning, right? It's like here or here. Synonym. What's a synonym? Different words, but they have the same meaning. So your teacher might give you an assignment to use as many different synonyms as you can, right? Did you ever learn about aptronyms? Aptronyms. I never learned about that in school, but I came to learn about aptronyms. What is an aptronym? Well, let me give you an example of an aptronym. I once met an orthopedic surgeon whose name is Dr. Bonebreak. It's true. Orthopedic surgeon, his name is Dr. Bonebreak. Famous, most famous Jamaican sprinter, his name is Usain Bolt. A tennis player, Anna Smashnova. <laughs> Do you understand? What is an aptronym? It's the name kind of is like what you do or who you are, right? So it's, it's kind of a cool thing. A poet, William Wordsworth, right? That kind of thing. Um, there, I understand there is a man, a doctor, an eye doctor, his last name is actually doctor, and his first initial is I. So he can say, I am eye doctor, you know, who is an eye doctor, right? So it's also true, though, that you can have uh, something in life that your name is the opposite. Some people call these inaptronyms, right? I remember when I was, uh, some years back, there was a, a Catholic cardinal in the Philippines, and his name was, some of those from the Philippines might remember, Cardinal Sin, right? And I always thought that a church figure whose name was Cardinal Sin, that, that just, that, that's an opposite. I read about a doctor whose name was Dr. Hacker. And his resident that worked with him was Dr. Wacker. So how many of you would want to go to a doctor, Hacker or Wacker's office? No. Now, I don't know if any of us here today have aptronyms for names. We can kind of go through the whole church. I need a volunteer. Oh, thank you, Molly. <laughs> Molly's name was an aptronym because her, her last name, her maiden name, was Stern. <laughs> And so I love to tell people that Molly was a stern woman until she met me. <laughs> she never smiled until she met me. Is that true? Now, we can't go through the whole church, but we can go through the whole church because we want to talk about this, this name that we all share today. We all come from all different kinds of places, all different things coming and happening in our lives, and we all know our own stories, and yet we walk into church, and all of a sudden we are under this umbrella. It's, this is an umbrella of grace, and under this umbrella of grace, we have this shared name, and that's the name Christian. And yet I want to ask this question, as we think about ourselves being Christian, am I a living aptronym? Is, is the way I'm living, is how, is my rep, does my life represent Christ? Am I a living aptronym? Or, hear me out, think through an inaptronym. Because you know, sometimes, am I representing Christ or not? Because that's the name I have been given. Now, why are we talking about this? Because our text today does not have the word aptronym or inaptronym. And yet, what our text does have before us is it has names. It's very interesting what Forrest read for us that in Acts chapter 11, in verse 26, it says, the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Right? We understand the name Christian, but that name was first given at Antioch, which is up in Syria. Now, why is it that people were given the name Christian? We understand what the name Christian is because that's a defining word. It has been since then a defining word for those who follow Christ. That is the name Christian. Even when they take census and polls and different things, how many people are Christian? Is that how we define ourselves? 
we all have the name Christian. Is that a name that is given or is it earned? Do you earn the name Christian or is it given? Yeah. Now, I think about my name, the name Mark Warren Henrich. That was just given. I did nothing to deserve it. It was just planted on me, right? Some of you might have names, and when you sign letters, you might put different initials after your name, right? If you have a certain degree, you might put that after your name. Is that given or earned? Earned, right? Some of you, when you go to work, all of a sudden you're different. Like here, you are just... Now, I'm not saying just, but you have your name. Hi, so, and, but when you go to work, you are, everybody's got a job title, right? Everybody knows their position and your rank, and that's something that is earned. Now, is being a Christian something that is given or earned? Yes and no. I love doing this in Foundations of Faith class. Some of you have just been through Foundations of Faith class, and many of you have been. At the very end of every lesson, we have true and false. Remember that, the true and false things? And some of the true and false are very easy. Some of them are hard. Some of them are tricky, where you can say yes, you can say no, depending on, uh, and we would have joy doing that. I think joy. Well, is being a Christian something earned or given? Well, on one hand, we say it is definitely something that is given, right? We, we do nothing to deserve. Now, Palm Sunday and Easter, we just had people, God be praised, that were up in the front, and I asked, do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And you said, yes, I believe. It seems like it's something I do. And yet we also know that no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. It's something that God plants in us by his grace. It is by grace that we have been saved through faith. It's not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. I know in my ministry from different friends I have talked to along the way that sometimes we might be hesitant about taking the step to formally become a Christian or be a member of a congregation of a church because we think, then I've got to be different. That, that somehow I've got to up my game, I've got to get to a certain performance. I'm not quite there. If, if church membership was performed on, based on performance, who would be a member? Now, I understand the concern, but we also have to look at what the Scripture says. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus on the cross said that one, work in Greek, that one word in Greek that we translate into three words, tetelestai, remember? It is finished. It's done. It's a gift. Those who believe in me carry the name Christian. It's the gift. And yet there's also an earning part of it. Who did the work? As you became and I become Christians, who did the work? God did. God is the one who knit us together in our mother's womb. God is the one who planned out our salvation. Jesus is the one that came into this world. And the, and the, one of the, the wonderful hymn says, this is the threefold truth on which our faith depends. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. That Christ is the one, who, we just went through the, the Holy Week, Christ is the one that went to the cross, he accomplished our salvation. Because of him and the, and the work that he did, we carry the name Christian. And he works in us and around us that we have that name my story is that God gave me faithful Christian parents who, when I was less than two weeks old, brought me to the baptismal font, and there I was baptized, Mark Warren Henrich, the Christian. And every single one of us here today has your own faith story, how God worked in you that you carry the name Christian. But now, how do we carry the name Christian? And that's where our text goes for today. What does a Christian look like? We just, as many of you know, we took a trip this last week because Molly's sister, younger sister, got married. She got married to Brian. Well, who's this Brian that's now going to enter the family? I've never met him before. I've seen pictures. 
I've never met the guy. And so it was a wonderful thing to actually go and meet him and to spend time with him, not only with the family, but just us, you know, the guys, kind of a little bit, and we behaved. Because then I got to know Brian, and I can understand why Jenna fell in love with him because of his heart, and he's kind, and he's caring, and now I know who Brian is. Well, what does a Christian look like? What is a Christian like? It's a beautiful thing that God's word is living and active because the scripture takes us back to this wonderful congregation where people were called Christians first at Antioch. Well, what was it about that church? You notice it wasn't in Nazareth or Bethlehem or Jerusalem. It was in Antioch. And Antioch, this Antioch, is 480 kilometers away from Jerusalem. So how did it happen that Christians, people that are gathering in this area, wow, Christians, they are like Christ by what they are doing. They are, they are followers of Christ. How did it happen? It happened because of a forced migration. It happened because of people that were, you might say, as some of us have gone through, refugee status. The early Christian church, yes, Jesus, before he ascended into heaven, he said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them, go to Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And everybody heard that, yes, 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 but... Who was actually moving? I mean, nobody's actually moving. That's a hard thing to do. Well, Vicar just led us in Bible class about sometimes God uses difficult, hard things. You know, why does God permit evil? Well, sometimes there's a, sometimes we can see that there's a purpose behind it. And, and in Acts chapter 8, it tells us that a great persecution, a great persecution broke out in the church after the stoning of Stephen. And because of that, the apostles were kind of left alone because people were kind of scared to touch them. But the people were forced, gone, fearful for their lives, and they went to wherever they had connections or places that were unknown in the Roman Empire, wherever would be a good landing spot. And some went to an island, Cyprus, some went to Cyrene, some went to Antioch, 480 kilometers away, and they tried to begin a new life, which is the story of many people here. I'm going to start this new life. But as I start this new life and things are difficult, I'm going to find people that have the same faith in their heart as me. And so we read that the Christians who were gathering in Antioch, they got to Antioch, and at first when they got there, and when they landed there, you might say, they, they shared the Christian message with people that were like them, with fellow Jews. Now, have you done studies about culture in schooling or in life? Culture is a fascinating subject, isn't it? And you can go down a thousand rabbit holes with culture. Because in culture, you kind of realize that everybody is totally unique, but that everybody is like everybody else. And then there are some categories where we're like some people and not like some people, and it's all these different things. And so when people from Jerusalem who had become Christians, first went up to Antioch, they started talking to people who were like them. People that also had the same Jewish background. But then because of the forced migration and intermoving of why people were moving here and there, we read that this thing happened. And, and maybe as Forrest read it, it didn't jump off the pages to you. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, from the other places, went to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks also. Did that shock you? You know, you and I hear and go, yeah, that's kind of what Jesus said. Go, therefore, teach all nations, right? And so they started to talk to other people, people that weren't of the same culture, you might say, sharing their faith with them. But you know how sometimes things go in church, because church isn't perfect, they got reported. They got reported. It got reported back to the mother church in Jerusalem. Hey, they're flying different flags in that church. There's other people. And then this is actually what happened. News of this reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem. And they sent Barnabas to Antioch. In parentheses, you can say, to check it out. Is what they were doing legit. Well, what did Barnabas find? He finds a 
Christian flock. And what do Christian people do? Christian people gather together, and because Christ has touched their heart, they want to share that with other people. Because as when Christ is in your heart, even though there are different cultures, we understand that, there aren't different cultures because we're all the same. And as we come, you might say, to, into the church today, we come to the communion railing, we understand this. No matter all our different backgrounds, why we're here, if it's immigration, refugee, born here, whatever, we all have, we are all on our knees before a cross. And we all share a sinful heart. And we all share a Savior who died for us and loved us. And he says, you are my dear brothers. And the reading we have for us read from us from 1 John that we are the children of God. And if you, if I'm a child of God and you're a child of God, what does that make us? Brothers and sisters. Even if you weren't born in Minnesota, where I was from. We're brothers and sisters in faith. So Barnabas goes, out, goes up there and he checks him out. And this Barnabas is just a wonderful guy. When he arrived and he saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad. He encouraged them to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. How does a person remain true to the Lord? Well, what did Jesus himself say? How do you remain true to the Lord? You are really my disciples. If you keep to my teachings, then you are really my disciples, and then you will know the truth. They knew who Jesus was. They gather together, they share Jesus, they continued in Bible study. And then Barnabas goes, oh, I've got a great idea because we're all new here and we're trying to figure this out. And, and as we talk about different people's gifts and, and the different things that people can do in the church, he goes, I know a guy. Isn't it nice if you know a guy? How many of you know a guy? Barnabas goes, I know a guy. I know a guy who would be, it would be a great fit for him and a great fit for the church. I know this guy named Saul. Do you guys know Saul? What did his name become? Paul. I know a g Well, why wasn't Saul hanging out in Jerusalem? Saul was kind of like the big guy in the church, except he wasn't. Saul had been a persecutor of the church. So if Saul goes, oh, now I'm a Christian, but hey, can I hang out here in Jerusalem at this church? He had helped to put people to death in Jerusalem. That's not going to go. But, Saul, but Barnabas knew that Saul had gifts and wanted to, God had called him and wanted to serve the Lord. So Saul said, hey, let me go. And So Barnabas said, let me go and get Saul and bring him back here because he will be a blessing to this church and you will be a blessing to him. And so he goes and he gets Saul. He brings him and then they work together using their different gifts. And then the church hears that there's a famine back in Judea where some of them had come from, but not all of them. Now, these are all people that have just moved, and, and, and finances are tight and hard. As you know, when you move, it's hard because you're starting over again. And we read in the verses after our text that the disciples, each according to their own ability, to, decided to provide help for the brothers living in Judea. They sent their gifts back with Barnabas. What does a Christian church look like? How many times have you heard me say, and if you're visiting here today, it's the first time you're going to hear me say it, but those who have been here before, you can probably repeat it with me. If you are looking for a church with a perfect pastor and perfect members, please, nobody's going to say it? Please do not come here. Don't say amen so fast. <laughs> Because if you're looking for a church with a perfect pastor and perfect members, it's not here. Because I will let you down as I have let you down. Members are not perfect and we will let you down. But we serve a perfect Jesus. And we are on a journey together to serve a perfect Jesus. And that means that we study Jesus together. It means we want to share Jesus in all different kinds of ways. It means that we want to serve together in big ways and in small ways and picking up trash like we did yesterday for the community around here, just serving together. It means that we put our offerings together to help things here and in other places. 
because that's what Christians do. And I was just reminded this last week that when I first came here, there are different circumstances in our church that there was a different uh, daycare entity. And so things were sold. I wasn't involved in any of the meetings. But the leaders of the church said, let's take some of the proceeds from this money and let's not keep it here. Let's give a, let's give a, a sizable portion back to our mother church. And, and we have a sister church that's across town. Let's give a portion to that sister church. And, and so that was done. Nobody asked my opinion. People, the leaders here just did it. And it was wonderful talking to some leaders of that sister church across town nine years later because now they are selling a portion of their land and they're going to be buying their own church and so forth. But they said, you know, hope was a blessing to us. And now let's take a portion of what we have received and let's also follow their example and give it to the mother church and let's give it to another church that needs help. Because that's what Christians do. There's one other name here I want to quickly touch on, the name Barnabas. I love the name Barnabas, although you never hear the name Barnabas, do you? Very, when's the last time you met a Barnabas? It's just, just not a common name, Barnabas. I don't know why. Because Barnabas, but that's not his real name. Do you know that? Barnabas is not his real name. The book of Acts tells us in Acts chapter 4 that his real name is Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus. But the apostles called him Barnabas because he was, and the name Barnabas means son of encouragement. Because the guy was just such an encourager. And it says he was one of the people that sold a field that he owned, and he brought the proceeds from that to give to the church to help out. And we read this about Barnabas, that in his life, as he went around, he was just an encourager, an encourager, and how God used people coming from different places, and he uses the unique gifts at different times in different ways thought about you, Ann and Tom, because this is your, maybe last Sunday with us, you're leaving back to Australia soon, for those who don't know Ann and Tom, well, you should, but they've been with us for seven years, and not a refugee status type of thing, but moving because of different services, moving here and so forth, and, and using your gifts to help the church and Christianity. Up in front or behind the scenes, because that's what Christians do. And because of different circumstances in the church, sometimes things change where we move here, and some of you are like, no, no, and you are welcome. And sometimes you've been here longer, or medium, kind of like me. But whether you're coming or going to carry the name Christ with you, the name Christian with you, and how beautiful to be an encourager for every single one of us, right? To be an encourager and to use those gifts wherever you go. And by the way, you might not know this, but you know, Tom, we know Anne because she's up here singing, right? And Tom walks around, plays piano, but he walks around with that little iPad thing. thing. He's not playing games. What is he doing? Now, somebody who just said he's not, they thought he was doing that. He's, he's doing all the technology. He's controlling the volume and all the different things as he's playing and walking around with that. And you know what Tom told me? He will be able to do that from Australia. <laughs> now, there's a whole time thing, but from now on, church family, Hope Church, if anything ever goes wrong with technology during a service, Right, we can just say that's that we can all say together, that's Tom. Tom, fix it, right? But thank you for being a Barnabas to us. Be a Barnabas where you go as you will be. Be a living aptronym for those here coming, for those staying, for those who are uncertain in life. Carry the name Christian. And maybe you've never heard the name, the word aptronym before, and that's okay if you never hear it again. But be who God has called you to be. Be a Christian. Amen. Amen. Let us please stand. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
We normally share our faith together with the Apostles' Creed by re, um, with words reciting it together, but it is also one, good once in a while to sing our faith. And we, so we sing the words of the Apostles' Creed this morning, I believe in God the Father. Join me in the confession of this faith. At this time, we'll gather our offering for the Lord. Many use Interact, which you can find at hopetoronto.com, and there's the letter there. Or for those who would like to give now, the um, ushers will pass around the offering plate. If you have any special prayer requests, please put that on your card and put it in the offering basket as it goes by or when it comes back up. Also, if you have any email changes or phone number changes, put that on there, and that's how we change the church database. Um, on Friday, a uh, Hope Notes went out. That's our church newsletter that says what's all going on. If you did not get that, that means we don't have your correct email. So if you'd like to have those little updates that come out every two weeks or so, please put that on here as well, and we'll up update it at the time. Uh, there's going to be a special song sung. Can I, are you going to say something about it, or can I? Or, or were you? Um, can I say what I know, and then you say what you know? I love this song, uh, and Wayne, tell me if I'm wrong, it's for Mercy Me, and the, the man who wrote it, I, I love this about Christianity, that when our end comes, we don't have to wonder about where we're going, because it is finished. But sometimes we do wonder, what's, what is it going to be like in heaven? What are we going to do? And so this man lost his father, and he knew his dad was in heaven, but he just wondered, what is dad doing in heaven? And that's why he wrote the song. 
Did I steal your thunder? No. <laughs> but you get to sing, so you have the thunder. So as we gather the offering, it's a beautiful song. Just to add, uh, some of you know this is Tom and Ann's <laughs> final service with us for a little while. Hopefully they come back or we go there in Australia. But Anne has been instrumental in introducing a lot of new music here to Hope Church since she's been here. And Pastor talked about this song called Imagine. And this is one of the songs that Anne has brought forward. So I thought I'd like to do a duet with her today.
Thank you for that. Uh, we'll now continue with our prayers of the church. In our prayers, we will remember Anna Tom as they, as they head out. A couple of prayer requests came in. Um, one, from I think, from Elsa, for her Aunt Teresa, for, for healing. And then a prayer came in from Yari. He had an operation on Tuesday, and it's, it's good to see him in church today. Thanking the Lord for a successful operation and, and surgery. So, please stand. Oh, and Tony and Monica. Monica just gave birth, so we're, we're praying. Thank you to the Lord for that and a successful recovery and all that. Dear Lord, we glorify your name above every name. How great is your love that we should be called your children. Forgive us our faults and sins of which we have many, ones we know and, and ones we don't. But make us strong witnesses of you wherever we go. And that whatever we say, we use our words to honor you. Whatever we do, that your name be praised in our faithful work. May all people know that we worship you, that we are proud Christians bearing your name with honor. Lord, be with us in all of our comings and goings. On drives home, another week at work, or moving across the world. We pray especially for Tom and Anne as they leave us and move back to Australia. Grant them safe travels and continue to bless the two of them in every way as one chapter of their life comes to a close and a new one starts. Lord, we thank you for Tony and Monica's baby girl. Um, we thank you for the, the blessing of new life in this world. And we pray that you continue to be with both of them, especially Monica, as, as she recovers. Lord, we pray for, for Yari also, thankful for a successful operation and thanking that he has recovered to this point and continues on that road. And Lord, we also pray for Elsa's aunt, Teresa. Continue to be with her and to, to heal her all according to your will. We thank you, Lord, and, and we know that you hear us. And it's in Jesus' name that we join in praying the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.
Well, good morning again. And as we're standing, say hello to your neighbor, somebody you know, maybe somebody you don't know. Good morning, welcome again. If you could find your way back to your seats, just a couple, couple announcements. Um, welcome again to everyone in person and joining online. Um, always great to worship the Lord in His house. Stick around after the service for fellowship over in the fellowship hall, hosted by Tom and Ann, as we also say farewell. Um, but thank you for pro providing those for us. Um, thank you to the cleaning crews who came out yesterday. We we cleaned up a little bit around, around the neighborhood, walked the streets, picked up trash, and then, uh, yeah, we cleaned up inside and outside on campus, as you can see, some of the pictures on the screen. Um, so big thank you there. And then Ms. Molly has an announcement about the 5K. Yeah. And we just wanted to give a big invitation to everyone. Um, first and foremost, you're going to see these in the back. It is a brochure advertising for Steps for Hope, which is our annual 5K walk run. And we, it is June 1st, and its registration starts at 9. There's a QR code, thank you, Jaden, for putting it on there that you can go and look at, and it'll take you right to the registration form. If you have questions, just seek out an ET member, and we will be happy to tell you. But for right now, if you register early, that gives you the chance to get the T-shirt. New color this year. Kali, we're doing red. <laughs> then... On the back side, this is a free barbecue that we are offering for the whole community after the Steps for Hope um, uh, event. So this is for anyone and everyone. It's a great time. There's going to be henna, raffles, prizes, ice cream, Hope Steel Pan Orchestra, and just a really good time as a way to just say thank you to the community that we are in. So our hope is, you're going to see us in a couple weeks, we'll be out there with laptops, but for right now, just save the date for Saturday, June 1st, and feel free to take as many of these as you want and hand to friends. So thank you, and have a blessed day. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. Um, my name is Sephora, and I wanted to put out an announcement that the evangelism team is also planning a camping trip for Hope for the congregation in the months of either July or August. Now, um, in order to start planning this, we need to kind of um, get all the people who would be interested. It would be a three-day camping trip, like leaving on Friday, coming back on Sunday at one of the campsites in Guelph. Um, I've honestly had so much fun at the Guelph campsites. I think it would be an amazing thing for the Hope Congregation to do this. So I believe there is a sign-up sheet for just whoever is interested. It's not like a 100% like I'm going. It's just we just want to get um, numbers up, and then we can start planning. So um, yeah. Should be fun. Thank you. Just before a, a couple of special things, um, just to give a reminder, Vicar announced last week, but I need to share with you because um, that I did receive a call. And how it works in a church is that a call doesn't mean job promotion or that I was seeking to work someplace else. We, we work within a church body that has different positions in ministry. 
and there, from time to time one receives a call to consider going someplace else. Now, some of you have my bags packed for me already this morning. I heard you're moving. No, no, when your person receives a call, it means they now consider between two calls, that place and this calling. And, how, and it's not so much, oh, what, what do I like? or what do you like, but how can a person's gifts best be used at this time and at this place? And so just to give you a little background, in my ministry, I counted it up this morning, I have received 19 calls in my ministry. So 19 times another place has called me. Twice, only twice, I have accepted. The other times I've said no. It was actually nine years ago today that Arthur Soman called me and said, Hope Toronto has called me to serve as a pastor. That was nine years ago today. So this is how things work. And so because I was gone for a week, now I begin the process of talking to the people in Michigan Lutheran Seminary, admissions director, why they want me to serve there. I need to listen to them, but then I also listen to you. Uh, next week I'll be meeting with the church council after church, but I very much value your insight and your opinions and your thoughts. And for those of you that are already reached out and texted, I really do value that, and that goes into the pondering, because God has blessed us to be here nine years. And you know, so, in my mind, we're here. We just got citizenship, we're here. And yet, then all of a sudden, God says, well, what about going here? And in God's kingdom, if God issues a call like that, that means I need to listen to both, okay? So, and then we usually decide a call within three to four weeks, so a couple more weeks from now, but it doesn't go longer than that normally, okay? So I appreciate your, your thoughts and opinions, and this is just how things work in the church, okay? Um, but it is a time of prayer and a lot of talks and walks with my stern wife. <laughs> um, Ann and Tom want to share something special with us at this time. We have loved our time at Hope, and um, the best way that we can, um, uh, nice. <laughs> the best way that, that we can kind of say goodbye is, is through song. So uh, here is our heartfelt words. Packing up the dream. Joy. 
brings her own surprise, and David brings his own surprise, and, but Hope family, we all heard, it's Tom and Anne's last day with us, and I think you guys should come forward. <laughs> right? <laughs> and the, the other funny thing is, we allowed Anne and Tom to provide snacks for after. <laughs> Yes, so, there, so you'll meet them at the back there and everyone will have a chance to say goodbye to them. But our president, Shiv David, he is sick today, so um, he couldn't be here to say goodbye. So I'm just inviting all of you and those listening to stay for the surprise. The surprise I know has started, but Let's continue it. This is going to take a few minutes or so. So I'm going to switch things up a little. I'd like Tom and Ann to sit there, and maybe the vicar and pastor can come down and sit here too, so that we can all be part of this. It's been a half a dozen years that Tom and Ann came to us. The name is Ann and Tom. Can you say it? Every time I open my hands, I want you to say, Yes, this couple was roaming for a church. They went to about 12 different churches, and they came to Hope, Easter, and they loved us. And they decided that this is where they're going to stay. And here they are. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Pauline Soman, and I'm the, I'm called the music coordinator for the services. I work with the pastor, and I work with Andra, who types the bulletin up, and then I put my feelers out, I put my calls out, I call Justine and Kayla, and I call Tracy, and I call Adara, and I call Sephora, and, and I call Molly, and I call Tiffany, and they're big. They have been a big force in Hope Church. They have been so willing to do just about anything I tell them to do. And I mean anything, anytime. Tom is a wonderful musician. For those of you who don't know, Tom used to play in a band. And then he also used to play in the church song lead and worship praise team. So he brought a lot of talent here. And anything I don't want to play, or I just want to sit and listen, I would say, you come and play for me, Tom. Now, Anne, on the other hand, has been such a wonderful support to me because she works with the Sunday school kids, she works with the choir, she has worked with the music camp, not only teaching, but putting up tons of kids in her place. She works with the choir, she practices with the choir when I'm not here. Because Anne and Tom are able to do this and give me vacation. And I don't know how many of you have noticed, but last year, I was off one Sunday every month because of... <laughs> in my 35 years in the capacity as MC, I was able to have pick up a lot of slack. 
So I am really, really going to miss them. Do you know what? Are here before me on Sunday, setting up for all the technical aspects of the service, working with the Sunday school kids, singing with them so they can come back and sing during the service, and also working with the new song leaders like Tanije and Forrest and Peter, there is always... Ooh. It's a big one. There's a magic in this couple, and I'm going to define the word magic. M-A-G-I-C. Making a godly impression consistently. Did you hear that? <laughs> they have been making a godly impression consistently. Magic. Magic. So we can all learn from this wonderful couple. And today, as you go out, I want you to congratulate them and thank them for the magic that has brought. Making a godly impression con. Boy, oh boy. I said I'm not going to cry because I want to be strong and make a godly impression consistently. Not only does Anne do this, all this wonderful stuff for me, she is so patient and so is Tom. He's never been annoyed with me when I say, Tom, last minute, you're going to do this. I'm sitting to listen. And you're going to do this. Never, ever any word of reproach or why aren't you doing this? can do this? I No. It was my pleasure, really, to take time off, to listen, to see what can be better and how to improve service. Choir, choir. Tom took over playing every concert. Now I have to go back to doing it. However, I want us all to say thank you. I thank them so much for being the magic for me and the magic for the musical part of our church services. Thank you, thank you so much. Hello, hello, hello. So, continuing all this love that we have for Anne and Tom, uh, my sisters over here are going to be joining me to sing a song for you. And we tried to like make it into a roast, but then we just love you too much. So it's just like really nice. <laughs> um, and it will be to the tune of 10,000 Reasons. So if anyone recognizes the tune, you are welcome to sing along. The words have been changed, so be mindful of that, but you can certainly catch on as you hear it. Oh 
Tom, <laughs> my dear friends at Hope, it is with mixed feelings that I have to address you today, because on All Fools Day, actually, precious sanctuary here at Hope was compromised. Our sanctuary was invaded, breached, if I may say so, by intruders. Intruders that came from all the way down under. <laughs> Two Aussies invaded us. <laughs> However, it was a friendly invasion. It turned out to be one that we treasured. The fairer of the two sexes, for some reason or the other, thought that this congregation was in need. This congregation was famished. Maybe we were thinning out. And before you knew it, we had lots and lots of Tupperware filled with cookies. <laughs> it was chocolate cookies, white chocolate cookies, raisin cookies, strawberry cookies, and the cookies kept flowing and flowing to this day. Maybe there are cookies in the fellowship hall, are there? No, there are no cookies today. 